John the Baptist said that there was someone coming after him who would baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. <laughs> that does not sound good. The fire bit doesn't sound good. The Holy Spirit bit sounds good. We'll explain all of that in a minute. And in this chapter, Luke gives a genealogy of Jesus that's very different to the one in Matthew. And scholars have wrestled with that for hundreds of years. But there's a very simple explanation. We'll get to that too. But let us read Luke chapter 3. Now, in the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate, being governor of Judea, and Herod, being tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip, tetrarch of the region of Iturea and Trachonitis, and Licinius, tetrarch of Abilene, in the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, the son of Zacharias, in the wilderness. He came into all the region around the Jordan, preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, make ready the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. Every valley will be filled. Every mountain and hill will be brought low. The crooked will become straight and the rough ways smooth and all flesh will see God's salvation. He said therefore to the multitudes who went out to be baptized by him, you offspring of vipers, who warn you to flee from the wrath to come? Produce fruit worthy of repentance and don't begin to say to yourselves, we have Abraham for our father. For I tell you, God is able to raise up children to Abraham from these stones. Even now the axe lies at the root of the trees, and every tree that doesn't produce good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. The multitudes asked him, What must we do? He answered them, He who has two coats, let him give to one who has none. He who has food, let him do likewise. Tax collectors came to be baptised, and they said to him, Teacher, what must we do? He said to them, Collect no more than that which is appointed to you. Soldiers asked him, saying, What about us? What must we do? He said to them, Exhort from no one by violence, neither accuse anyone wrongfully, be content with your wages. All the people were in expectation, and all men reasoned in their hearts concerning John, whether perhaps he was the Christ. John answered them all, I indeed baptise you with water, but he who comes is mightier than I, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to loosen. He will baptise you in the Holy Spirit and fire. Whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly cleanse his threshing floor. He will gather the wheat into his barn and will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Then, with many other exhortations, he preached good news to the people. But Herod the Tetrarch, being reproved by him for Herodias, his brother's wife, and for all the evil things which Herod had done, added this also to them all that he shut up John in prison. Now when all the people were baptised, Jesus also had been baptised and was praying. The sky was opened and the Holy Spirit descended in a bodily form like a dove on him. And a voice came out of the sky saying, You are my beloved son, in you I am well pleased. Jesus himself, when he began to teach, was about 30 years old, being the son, as was supposed, of Joseph, the son of Heli the son of Matat, the son of Levi, the son of Melchi, the son of Janai, the son of Joseph, the son of Mattathias, the son of Amos, the son of Nahum, the son of Esli, the son of Nagai, the son of Maath, the son of Mattathias, the son of Simeon, the son of Joseph, the son of Judah, the son of Joanan, the son of Resa, the son of Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, the son of Neri, the son of Melchi, the son of Adai, the son of Cosm, the son of Elmadam, the son of Ur, the son of Josie, the son of Eliezer, the son of Joram, the son of Matat, the son of Levi, the son of Simeon, the son of Judah, the son of Joseph, the son of Jonan, the son of Eliakim, the son of Melia, the son of Menan, the son of Mattatha, the son of Nathan, the son of David, the son of Jesse, the son of Obed, the son of Boaz, the son of Salmon, the son of Nashon, the son of Aminadab, the son of Aram, the son of Hezron, the son of Perez, the son of Judah, the son of Jacob, the son of Isaac, 
the son of Abraham, the son of Terah, the son of Nahor, the son of Serug, the son of Ru, the son of Pelug, the son of Eber, the son of Shelah, the son of Canaan, the son of Aphexad, the son of Shem, the son of Noah, the son of Lamech, the son of Methuselah, the son of Enoch, the son of Jared, the son of Mahalalel, the son of Canaan, the son of Enosh, the son of Seth, the son of Adam, the son of God. <laughs> wow, quite a genealogy. In the 15th year of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate was the governor of Judea. So he goes and lists all the leaders in all the various places. That's when um, John the Baptist came preaching. Now, the 15th year of Tiberius is 26 AD. Now, there's a big discussion about that because, <laughs> as there always is, because Tiberius became Caesar kind of jointly with his, adopt, his father who, who adopted him for two years. And then two years later, his father who adopted him dies and he becomes Caesar on his own. So there are some people who argue and they say, oh, he wasn't really Caesar on his own until like 28, 29. But, so there are some people who argue he was, this is 26, 27 that he, John starts preaching and some people say it's 28, 29. I feel like it's 26. And um, the reason I think it's 26 is because of the census that I mentioned in chapter 2 yesterday. The censuses were every 14 years. The census that was in Jude the census was announced in 8 BC, and the census happens in Judea around about 6, 5 BC. And if you add on about 30 years from 6, 6 or 5 BC, you get to 26, which is when John the Baptist preaches when Jesus gets baptised. And then if you add on about three years of ministry, that puts Jesus dying on the cross at around about 33 years of age in about the year 30. To me, it all adds up nicely. <laughs> but there are experts, of course, that discuss all these things to, to the infinite degree. Um, but let's just say that Jesus is born around 5, 6 BC, lining up nicely with that census. Um, and then he starts ministry at around about 30 years of age, which Luke says lower down in this chapter, which is verse 23. It says, Jesus, when he began to teach, was about 30. Um, that means that if Jesus is born in 6, let's say, BC, let's say 5 BC. No, let's say 6. Let's say he's born December 25, in, which is the typical date for Christmas, in 6 BC. And then he starts ministering in 26 that is, um, and let's say he starts ministering early in the year, he would be exactly 30. Now you would say, but hang on, 6 to 26, that's 26, that's, um, looks like 32 years. It's not, it's not 32 years. One of the years is disappears because there's no year zero. And um, so like when you're, when you're counting your maths and you count from 20 down to 10, the year 10 is like a, it's like a zero year. But in this case, there's no year zero. You go from one straight to nine, if, if that makes sense. You go from one AD straight to one BC. There's no like year in between. So you lose a year there. There's not 32 years, there's only 31. And then if Jesus is born late in the year, like say it's December 25, which in other words, it's literally just a week before the next year. And then he starts ministering around about the time of Passover, it's actually closer to 30 years and four months, something like that. So um, Jesus would literally have been around about 30. Now, I, um, people really argue about the day that Jesus was born. Was it December 25 or not? That's a big discussion which we won't go into. There is enough evidence to say it might have been December 25, and there are other ideas to say it might not have been, and uh, it doesn't make much difference really. <laughs> I think it's nice that we just have a day that we remember his birth. And um, if Jesus, I think if God really wanted us to know for sure, he could have easily put more information in the Bible to help clarify that whole question. The early um, early Roman Empire period, in, in around about the year 500 or 400, there was a Christian called Dionysius Exiguus, 
And he's the guy who was given the task of setting the calendar date correctly based off Jesus' birth. And he thought in that year, around about 500-ish, he felt that Jesus was born on December 25. That's what they thought back then. So um, that's why we celebrate his birth on that date. So anyway, um, John the Baptist comes preaching, I'm going to say, in the year 26. Um, and then, um, because that's the 15th year of Tiberius, and um, he says all sorts of things like, um, if you have two coats, give one to someone else. He says to tax collectors, only collect what you're supposed to collect, no more. Tax collectors were notorious for ripping people off. He says to soldiers, don't extort by violence. So there were soldiers that would use their the fact that they had weapon, kind of like a mafia thing. You know, we'll protect you, but give us money that type of thing. And so there were soldiers that would run racket schemes. Uh, not all soldiers. In Luke chapter 7, there's a centurion who is a good centurion who helps build a synagogue. So he's a good soldier. But John the Baptist is preaching, telling people to repent, follow the Lord and consider others. Give. Don't, ah, don't take more than what you have to. Be mindful of the needs of others. And then he says, I'm not the Messiah. But someone is coming after me who I can't even untie their shoelaces. And they are going to baptise with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Now, John was baptising in water, you know, immersing in water. But someone was coming who could baptise with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Now, that fire, it's not a good thing. That's judgment. Quite a few times in this passage, John the Baptist talks about fire. He says that the Messiah is going to gather the wheat into the barn and he's going to separate the wheat from the chaff. The wheat's the real thing and the chaff is the rubbish. And he's going to burn the chaff with unquenchable fire. So Jesus, the Messiah, is someone who comes and to those who love him, he baptizes them with the Holy Spirit. But to those who don't love him, they are baptized with fire. So no matter who you are, there's a baptism for you, and Jesus gives both. But the baptism of fire is not, um, it's not something we want to experience. Now, the Salvation Army, they have, uh, and they're great people. I grew up in the Salvation Army. We love the Salvation Army, and some of the Salvation Army, the things they do in the world make a great, great difference. I have family members uh, you know, that, that have come out of rehabilitation centres, they've got saved because of the Salvation Army's work. I mean, the amount of things they do, thank God for the salvos, as they say. <laughs> but on the Salvation Army logo on their crest, their motto is blood and fire. But the way they talk about fire, it's a different way that's than the, what's being referred to here. You know, when I was a young Christian and it said, and I used to read this, that Jesus will baptize you with fire. I thought that what that meant, well, I thought what that meant was that you'd be fired up for God like that. He'd baptize you with a with a life of fired up experience. He does do that. But the baptism of fire that's being talked about here is a judgment baptism. He does that too. <laughs> so as a Christian, you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You want to have blood and fire like the way the Salvation Army understand it but you don't want fire the way that's being described in this chapter. So we want the fire of the Lord, but not the judgment of the Lord, which is often described as fire. So seek the Lord for his baptism. The baptism is of his Holy Spirit. We get down to the end of this chapter, and it says Jesus began to teach when he was about 30. He was the son, it was supposed, of Joseph. Because remember, Joseph's not his biological father, He's born of a virgin. Joseph's his adopted father or his stepfather. Joseph is his real father in the sense that Joseph fathers him, but he's not biologically his father. So it it says here that he was the son it was supposed of Joseph. And then it it says the son of Heli. This is where the genealogy immediately goes strange because in Matthew there's a genealogy as well and it says that, that Jesus was the son of Joseph the son of Jacob. You know, way back, you know, in the Old Testament, there's 
Jacob and he has 12 sons and one of those sons is Joseph. So it's, there's this really common thing through the Bible whenever there's a person called Jacob, he calls his son Joseph. It happens quite a few times. And so in Matthew's genealogy, we've noticed that there are two times where there's a Jacob who has a son called Joseph. But here, it, it says that Joseph's father is Heli. Like Eli, but with a H in front. And... Um, so what's going on? He doesn't have two dads. That and some other things about this genealogy have caused huge numbers of scholarly discussions. <laughs> but the answer, the, the answer to me is really simple. Joseph is the son-in-law of Heli. Heli is Mary's father. And then from that point on, we're following the line of Mary, not the line of Joseph. Now you might say, um, how do we know that that's true? And I'll show you in just a second. But, you know, I have a father-in-law. A lot of people have a father-in-law. What, and what do you call your father-in-law? I call mine dad. <laughs> and it's really, really common in lots of places to call your father-in-law dad. And so here we have Joseph, the son of Heli. He's the son-in-law of Heli. And then, but Heli is Mary's father. We know that it's Mary's father because Jewish people who didn't become Christians, um, they attacked the early church. Now, there's um, a writing called the Talmud, Jewish writing, and there's a section of it which is very antagonistic towards Mary, Jesus' mother Mary, and they say some quite nasty things about her, and they refer to her as Mary, the daughter of Heli. So we know that Mary's father is Heli. And here it says that Joseph is the son of Heli. You could say another way, he's the son-in-law of Heli. And then it goes on down all these generations and it goes all the way back to God. So in Matthew, we've got a, a genealogy, but it's the genealogy of Jesus through Joseph. Now he's not biologically, biologically connected to Joseph, but he is Joseph's Son. And that's really important if you're going to say that Jesus is a king in the line of David because you can adopt a son and that son can become a king. That's happened many times. And Jesus he may be the adopted son of Joseph, but he's totally in the line of that family. He's totally in the line of David. But here in the genealogy of Mary, we find out that he's actually biologically the son of David too. So he's actually descended from King David in two different ways entirely. As we go down this genealogy of Mary, we get to, it says that the son of, son of, son of, son of, son of, it goes down, it says the son of Matatha, the son of Nathan, the son of David. David had lots of sons. In Matthew's genealogy, it goes David and then Solomon and Rehoboam and follows down all the kings. But in Mary's genealogy, David has another son called Nathan. Nathan has a son called Matatha, and it goes down a completely different line. Some of the people in this line turn out to be priests. In other words, Levites. And that explains why Jesus is a relative of John the Baptist, who's a Levite. Mary is a Levite. Joseph's father is from the tribe of Judah. Joseph's mother Mary is from the tribe of Levi. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> and um, But if you follow it back far enough, it goes back to the tribe of Judah for both sides. Pretty cool. Nathan, by the way, is Solomon's older brother. Um, both Nathan and Solomon had the same mother and the same father, Bathsheba. We talked about all of that when we were going through um, the videos in Chronicles. So that's a very quick explanation of the genealogies and what it means to be baptised in fire, which you want to avoid. If you like the video, please share it. If you think it's going to help someone, share it directly with them. Let, it, let these videos be a blessing to more and more people. Lord, I want to thank you for the word of God, which speaks to us, Lord, today. It might even speak to us today more than what it spoke to people thousands of years ago. Let it live in our hearts, I pray. Amen.